Hello, this is John Seo, Vice President of Benchmark Media Systems, and we're out in the lab today, and we're going to look at the differences between star quad cable and standard microphone cable. I have two pieces of cable here. The red one is Canary star quad cable. It's the same cable that we use in our uh, Benchmark uh, studio and stage uh, microphone cables. Uh, the second piece of cable is a standard twisted pair uh, microphone cable with a braided shield. Both cables have a braided shield. The difference is that the red cable has a four wire star quad configuration. And what that does is that gives you magnetic immunity. And we're going to demonstrate that with these two pieces of cable. Both cables have a 50, 150 ohm termination on the end of them that simulates a microphone. Obviously we don't want to pick up any room noise from the room when we're doing this test, so we just have the, the resistor terminators on the end. We're going into a microphone preamplifier, a Benchmark Pre-420 microphone preamplifier, and we're going from there to our Audio Precision System 2722 test station. Uh, we have a uh, scope display up here so that we can look at the waveforms. Uh, right now we can see we just have a little background noise. Uh, I can switch between the star quad cable and the standard cable. And we're looking at the standard cable. We're looking at the star quad cable. You can see that both of them uh, are, are very similar. Up here we have a spectrum analysis. So we can run a, a spectrum analysis of the output noise. And I'm going to run that in a minute just to give us a baseline so that we can see that uh, with no interference right now, both channels are relatively quiet. And in all cases, the first scan is going to be the star quad cable, and the second scan is going to be the standard cable. Right now, we can see that they're both uh, virtually identical. All right, first thing we're going to do here is uh, I've got several devices that, that might be found uh, typically in a studio or any live sound uh, 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 application. Uh, there's always a proliferation of, uh, of tablets, uh, uh, phones, uh, computers. I've got two computers. I've got a charger for a computer. I've got uh, a couple pieces of audio gear here. I've got a DAC1 D to A converter and a DAC2 uh, D to A converter. And we're going to look at how those devices interfere with the cables. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is this uh, tablet. I'm going to switch to the uh, Starquad, uh, to the standard cable. And as I set this transformer down, we have interference and we can see it on the uh, scope display, and if I run FFT, the first sweep, right now we're sweeping the star quad cable, and the second sweep will be the standard cable. And you can see we picked up a whole lot of hum at 120 hertz. Uh, we've got a, uh, a bunch more out at uh, the, the fourth harmonic of the line frequency, uh, 240 hertz. So we're picking up all these line-related interference signals plus a whole bunch of white noise which which we can hear when we switch to that input. You can hear the white noise and you can hear the hum. And that's being picked up from the magnetics in this little this little charger. And I can move it around and things get worse, but right now we're listening to the standard cable. If I go to the star quad cable you can see that I can move it around, and I've got excellent uh, uh, immunity to this magnetic uh, interference. Got a uh, cell phone, a cell phone charger. Okay, the star quad sounds quiet. And again, if I listen to the standard microphone cable, I'm picking up hum. Run the uh, sweep. It's 
standard cable. And here's the start quad cable. I mean, the, the, I mean it's the other way around. First sweep was the standard, or the start quad cable. The green sweep is the uh, standard cable. And you can see all of these uh, line-related uh, uh, frequencies that are interfering. And I should point out that there's, in all of these tests, we're seeing 20 to 50 dB difference between the uh, standard cable and the star quad cable. Next, uh, I have a charger for uh, portable computer. As I move it around, you can see I can get uh, different amounts of uh, interference on the standard cable. If I switch to the star quad, you can see that we have excellent immunity. And uh, if we compare the two on our sweep, that first sweep was the star quad cable, and this is the standard cable. And if we take a look at the cursors there, or the, or the, the amplitude of this, so we can see that there's 10, 20, about 30 dB difference between uh, the, the uh, interference uh, to the star quad cable and the interference to the standard microphone cable. Um, so these are various consumer devices that uh, might be uh, interfering with uh, microphone cables. Uh, let's look at a couple of uh, professional products. This uh, first product here is a DAC1 D to A converter made by Benchmark. And um, I'm going to switch to the standard microphone cable. And we'll see as we set this device on top of the cable, you can hear some hum. Go to the star quad, it's quiet. Again, we'll run our two sweeps. First sweep, of course, will be the star quad cable. And the second sweep is the standard microphone cable. So even though this professional device puts out a much lower magnetic field, it's still enough to be picked up on uh, uh, a standard microphone cable. But you can see that the star quad cable does uh, wonderfully well. Now, the source of the magnetic interference is this toroidal transformer that's uh, mounted inside this uh, chassis. Now let me show you what happens when we put uh, a DAC2 on top of the cable instead of a DAC1. Very similar product. They have the same function. Uh, but the DAC2 has a switching power supply in it. And the DAC1 has a linear power supply. Uh, so many people think that uh, switching su power supplies are always noisier and cause more interference than linear power supplies. Um, but you're going to see that that's not the case. Watch. Right up here is about where the peaks were. Look at how much lower the magnetic interference is from the uh, DAC2 versus the DAC1. The DAC1 was up here. The DAC2 is way down here. Uh, the difference is that this has a switching power supply uh, that, that emits very low magnetic fields. The magnetic fields are, for one thing, they're, they're up in the hundreds of kilohertz above the audio band. Uh, but because the magnetics are so small, the transformers are actually about that big. Uh, the magnetic fields are, are correspondingly uh, much smaller than the magnetic field emitted by this big uh, line frequency transformer. So that just demonstrates uh, the advantages uh, of switching power supplies versus linear power supplies. Uh, I also have uh, a computer tower here, which is plugged in. And I'm going to switch uh, momentarily to the 
standard cable so we can hear the interference as I move this power cord near the uh, uh, microphone cable. And all I've done is I've just crossed it at a 90 degree angle, but you can see the interference on the scope and you can hear it. And if I run the sweep, we'll see the difference. That's the star quad cable, of course. And there's our standard microphone cable. So think about how many times you might just have a power cord crossing uh, or running near a microphone cable. And that's what can happen if you have a standard cable. You've got the star quad cable, you've got nothing to worry about. Um, so again, these are the benchmark star quad uh, uh, cables that use uh, Canary uh, uh, star quad cable, which we, the basis of our tests, uh, this, is, uh, this is the best star quad cable we've seen. Uh, they're very durable and uh, resistant to magnetic fields. Thanks for joining us.